What's going on Jigsaw Health crew? It's Thomas DeLauer and today I'm talking about the difference between ketosis and modified Atkins. A lot of you had some really interesting questions that you posted up in the comment section underneath some of my keto videos. So I figured it's perfect to really talk about the true therapeutic ketogenic diet versus what we commonly know as the Atkins diet to have an understanding of what's good for your health, not just cosmetic results. So let's get right into the science. You see, ketosis wasn't just discovered by some fitness guy that decided that, hey, if we cut out carbs out of the equation, everyone's gonna get in shape and everyone's gonna feel good and look amazing and be full of vein and everything like that. No, it has to do with treatment. It has to do with therapies. In fact, it was way back when, it was literally like 500 BC that Hippocrates started writing about fasting having a major effect on epilepsy. People think that it's all this modern science thing. No, it goes way back when. People discovered that if they were abstaining from food, all these different illnesses would magically start to go away. But of course, you didn't have modern technology to really identify what was going on. So it took until 1921 when a particular doctor named Dr. Galen discovered that it was the ketones that were the common denominator when it came down to treating illnesses. So they started looking at things saying, okay, if we have fasting, and fasting is eliciting this amazing response, what is it exactly about fasting that is treating epilepsy and treating some of these diseases? Well, it was ketones. When you're fasting, you're in a ketogenic state. What's so funny is that there are so many different people out there that bag on the ketogenic diet. They just love to bag on it. They just say it's horrible and that it's gonna raise your cholesterol, and it's gonna do all of this, but they're totally fine with fasting. Well, the interesting thing is we're ultimately going after the same thing when it comes down to the positive effects. All we're trying to do with ketosis is get those ketone bodies up that would normally occur when you're fasting. So it wasn't until 1924 when a guy by the name of Dr. Wilder at the Mayo Clinic discovered the true ketogenic diet. Now when I say the true ketogenic diet, I mean the ketogenic diet that has been used to treat epilepsy and has been used to treat different glucose impairment issues where your body can't use glucose. So really, it wasn't until 1924 that it was actually put into a system and we were able to truly extract all the data from 1921 and put it into an actual diet. So where does this come into play with what's happening today? You see, today we're seeing all kinds of people doing the keto diet, and I'm someone that promotes it. But what is really going on? You see, the classic keto diet is like a four to one ratio of fats to protein, three to one at the very most. Okay, what is it today? Well, most people end up consuming a one to one or a two to one if they're really doing a halfway decent job. So all of the science, everything that we know about ketosis is looking at the three to one or the four to one, but no one wants to do that today. You see, the Atkins diet, or today it's called the modified Atkins diet, is really more like that two to one. Is it effective? Absolutely, it's still very effective at helping your body restructure, but are you getting the benefits of the ketone bodies? Probably not. What am I a fan of? I'm a fan of kind of splitting the difference. I'm in the ballpark of three to one. I think we should have our fats high, but it's not that exciting for people. People are much more likely to dive into a prime rib or dive into a ribeye steak than they are likely to dive into a bowl of coconut oil. And that's where the common divergence occurs. People don't truly understand the difference between the ketogenic diet and modified Atkins. But here's something that you should probably know. If you're following more of a modern diet, a modern style of ketosis, there's a good chance you're consuming so much protein that your body's going into gluconeogenesis and kicking you out of ketosis in the first place, even if it's not when you're measuring it on the little keto sticks or your breath meter, okay? You're still probably coming out of ketosis a lot more than you think. So we need to start addressing the therapeutic issues and what the ketogenic diet can do if you're doing it right as far as therapy is concerned. Now, don't get me wrong, I still wanna talk about the cosmetic things. I still wanna talk about body composition, how that's gonna work. But let's take a look at what's going on when it comes down to the therapeutic side of things. So ketosis is used for a lot of different things. But when it comes down to different energy states, when the body can't produce the right kind of energy that it needs from glucose. Okay, we're talking about like a pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency. Maybe you remember from biology class that uh, pyruvate cycle or the Krebs cycle where sugar goes in and it goes through the Krebs cycle, ultimately creates pyruvic acid and ultimately creates energy. Well, some people have issues where they don't create that. So that's where ketosis comes in as a great alternative fuel source. It's literally a different fuel source for the mitochondria to use. Now we have to remember that ketosis is all about mitochondrial function. We're trying to find a different way that the mitochondria can still run on fuel without glucose. Another one is gonna be something like phosphofructokinase deficiency, which is in the same vein, where your body cannot produce the right kind of sugars, it cannot produce the right kind of energy from glucose. So ketone bodies come into play. But what about some of the more popular ones, okay? Things like uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. How does that work? Well, it still comes down to the mitochondria. So I'm getting to a point here. 
don't just think that I'm talking just about the therapeutic side of things because I'm going to get to a point. And it all has to do with that mitochondria. In the case of Parkinson's disease, it ends up being where the body doesn't have the ability to transfer sugar through the blood-brain barrier properly, and it ends up getting misconstrued through something known as complex I. This complex I ends up making it so that the mitochondria cannot function properly. Therefore, it's not sending the right signals. Therefore, dopamine responses aren't working. Thus, you have Parkinson's disease. Well, when you have ketosis, you have ketone bodies that can cross through the blood-brain barrier and actually activate the mitochondria, giving new life to patients with Parkinson's disease because they now have a backup energy source. So some of the people that are gonna be speculative about the ketogenic diet are gonna say to me right now, okay, well, this is great. It's great for people that are having issues. It's an alternative backup fuel source. Well, I would argue this. When has the mainstream ever totally led us completely right on target? Just because we discovered a different way of eating with a different fuel source doesn't mean that that's not the right or the wrong way. If we have the ability to switch back and forth, it seems like it's actually a nice sparing way to work. You're sparing the mitochondria. You're not gonna burn out the glucose side of things. You're not gonna burn out the fat side of things. So maybe you go through phases of ketogenic therapy where you actually treat your body and give your mitochondria a break by activating a different portion of it. Anyway, I digress. But let's talk about cancer for one second too, because cancer is a big one. Ketosis and cancer is a hugely researched topic right now. And it all has to do with the fact that cancer cells are very unique. I've done a lot of personal research in the world of cancer. Those of you that know me well know that I lost my father in February to cancer, and I was investigating cancer research and ketosis for a long time too. In fact, some of the doctors over at UC Davis that I was speaking to when my dad was in treatment were big advocates of using ketogenic therapies as an adjunct to chemotherapy. Not just as a therapy, but as an adjunct to. It's going to help chemotherapy. Now here's why. Cancer cells are unlike other cells in the body. We know that. But they're very much unlike other cells in terms of how they are receptive to glucose. They have 10 times the amount of insulin receptors on them. What does that mean? It means that when you consume carbohydrates, they are 10 times more likely to utilize those carbohydrates than other cells in your body, which means they're gonna grow and they're gonna thrive on sugars. Well, they're also kind of funky, simply because they don't have the ability to metabolize fats very well. Their mitochondria is damaged. Remember, cancer cells are rogue cells. They're not totally like normal cells. They don't function like other cells in our body. They don't have a nice system and a policy and a standard operating procedure to go through. They go through their own little funky little mechanism and their mitochondria is damaged. It can't utilize fats. So when you are giving your body a lot of fats and not a lot of carbohydrates, they don't know how to utilize that and they start to starve off. But anyway, I'm starting to go too far down the therapeutic line. The point is this. If you're looking to do a ketogenic diet, I encourage you to investigate why you're doing it. So then how does this all link back to the Atkins diet and how does this all link back to body composition and the diet that's for you? Okay, I'm not saying that either one is truly bad, but I am stressing that you take a look at how the ketogenic diet works in your body because that's the true thing that we're after when we go on a keto diet. The body composition changes are going to occur, but if you're sticking in the modified Atkins approach, where you're consuming like one to one or two to one, you are more than likely going to experience a lot more lethargy. You're not gonna feel as good, and this simply has to do with the fact that you're never truly using ketones as a source of fuel. You're using them for periods of time when it's useful for your body. And then as soon as your body feels like it still needs glucose, it's either gonna convert those excess proteins into glucose, or you're not getting enough fats to actually promote ketone bodies, so you're gonna start breaking down your own muscle tissue. There's a lot of flaws in the modified Atkins, and I don't want you to think that the Atkins diet is the true ketogenic diet. There is a distinct difference. Now again, I'll be the first to say that most of the people out there are probably doing some form of the modified Atkins or some form of Atkins in the first place. It still works you're still gonna see some changes in your body composition because you are dramatically reducing your insulin levels. And that is definitely positive. There are so many amazing things that are attributed to lower insulin levels. So I'm not saying it's bad, but I am saying before you bag on the ketogenic diet, understand the science, understand the direct ratios, understand some of the research that Dr. Dom Diagostino has done and has put out there on the internet and on podcasts and out there in the entire world for us to read. I'm a huge consumer of his content and I think that he really has the right idea because at the end of the day, we do have to make sure that we are our own advocates for our health. And if ketogenic diet is gonna be a way that we can reduce inflammation and actually have a neuroprotective effect on our body, I feel like it's definitely good for even the average person to cycle in and out of ketosis for longer periods of time, like three to six months. Is it a lifestyle that you wanna do forever? That's gonna to totally be on you if you like the food. But at the end of the day, I just want you to know the difference between modified Atkins and the ketogenic diet. 
And of course, don't forget fasting, because at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. We're fasting, right? We're just trying to mimic fasting. So there you have a Jigsaw crew. As always, keep it locked in here on Jigsaw Health, your epicenter for everything mineral related, everything health related, and your one-stop shop for the best magnesium in the world. So keep it locked in here. I'll see you in the next video.